Hello everyone, welcome to the 7th video on AWS Certified Cloud Practitioner Crash Course. In this video, we are going to discuss about various different networking constructs provided by the AWS. To understand networking, we need to understand about uh, main construct with AWS. The main thing is AWS VPC. VPC is the virtual private cloud. It is an isolation boundary provided by AWS to deploy our resources. In simple means, it is like an uh, like a wall. Actually, it's like you can consider a VPC like a boundary. So whatever the resources which we are going to deploy within this VPC will be accessible only within this VPC alone. So if if I want to access the resources apart from this VPC, it is not possible unless until we need to give an proper connectivity between the VPC to the other VPC. So it's a boundary. So it is like logically isolated virtual network which is provided to us by the AWS is called as the VPC. So you can control everything which we are going to deploy within this boundary. In this case it is going to be the subnets. Subnets it's like a boundary within a boundary. So what you can do within this VPC we will be having multiple subnets. It's like uh, so while designing the VPC we can design it in such a way so that we can have multiple subnets. Inside the subnets we will be placing our resources. So we can we can give the communication, we can allow the communication between these two subnets using various different constructs which is provided to us by the AWS. So VPCs provide us the options to create the subnets and it provides us the option to create the route tables and, and the network gateways. There are a lot of different gateways which are available to, um, to provide us the network connectivity, internet connectivity and NAT options. So both v, IPv4 and IPv6 is supported um, by VPC. So uh, nowadays IPv4 uh, with the limited amount of the addresses, uh, so we are moving towards the IPv6 concept which will provide a trillion number of uh, um, addresses IP addresses for our usage and a new introduction to the uh, networking it is the reachability anal analyzer which is it's like an analysis tool which is used to analyze which is used to debug the network reachability between two of the resources within the VPC and uh, one more important thing to remember is VPC flow logs it's, it's, a, it's an auditing mechanism so we can we can explore we can analyze the VPC flow logs to understand what are all the traffic which flows in and out of the VPC so this VPC flow logs can be very well integrated with um, S3 so we can park our flow logs onto S3 and then we can have some cloud watch and all these things we can either we can use Athena or some other tools to analyze the VPC flow logs as well so one important construct which you need to know is internet gateway internet gateway it is like it's in simple terms if I want to give an internet access to my VPC then this component needs to be attached to my VPC so internet gateway is a simple thing which which allows the communication between the VPC and the internet and there comes the another guy which is the NAT NAT is the network address, network address translation gateway NAT gateway is used to provide internet access for the resources which are deployed on the private subnets so ideally in this case we will be deploying the databases and other things on the private subnet for the security reasons so for databases and other thing to have the internet access we will deploy a NAT gateway on the public subnet so it's a single directional traffic the instances which are sitting on the private subnet can access the internet but nobody from the internet can access the resources which are placed on the private subnet so for for that reason NAT gateway is one helpful option and uh, the other thing we need to know is the VPC endpoints. VPC endpoints mm, are the private connectivity. It is like uh, the traffic which are going to happen between the AWS and the resources within the AWS. In an ideal scenario if you see I, I placed my uh, EC2 instances within the subnet. From EC2 I need to access my S3 bucket. So in this case it needs to happen using the AWS private link instead of going through internet internet and then coming back to S3 we can enable that using the private link option of AWS that can be done using AWS VPC endpoints and two important uh, security concepts to remember one is the security group security group is the firewall mechanism which we apply at the instance or resource level so we can define what are all the access mechanisms what are all the IP addresses which are going to access my resources all these things so security groups are stateful mechanism so whatever which we are allowing on inbound it is automatically allowed on the outbound as well so 
and the security groups will be applied at the instance or resource level the network access control list or knackles is the another firewall mechanism which we will be applying at the subnet level so inside the subnet what are all the traffic which are going to flow those rules are defined using the net network access control list and one more important thing to remember vpc peering vpc peering is all about say i am having two different vpcs i need communication between these two vpcs this can be achieved using vpc peering so these two vpcs or whatever the vpcs which are peered with each other they can communicate with each other some of the concepts it's like uh, transitive peering is not allowed and overlapping siders between the vpcs are not allowed to to understand it in a better way this pictures will provide more uh, insights so it is like you can see this as i already mentioned inside this vpc we will be having two subnets here one is the public subnet and other one is the private subnet so public subnet are the ones which will be having access to the internet gateways so here you can see the web servers are located on public subnet using this router it is directed to internet gateway so whatever the resources which are deployed on the, which are deployed on this public subnet will be having the internet access using this internet gateway and private subnet we will be deploying the database servers on private subnet as we discussed earlier so to provide the access to provide the internet access to the database servers this will be communicated this will be connected to the nat gateway so it is a single directional traffic these database servers can access the internet via the nat gateway but traffic from the internet won't be allowed to the database servers so it allows the single directional traffic so this is how the typical vpc looks like and um, what are all the various different constructs like internet gateway and nat gateway are deployed onto vpc considering this diagram you can see the vpc endpoint as we already discussed so uh, it is like uh, i want my communication from ec2 to s3 but instead of going through internet i can have it using the aws private link options those options can be enabled using vpc C N points. So the vpc endpoint will provide say considering this scenario in this v2 instance can communicate to s3 via this vpc endpoint and coming to the vpc pairing as we already discussed say here there is a vpc a and the vpc b these two vpcs will be peered will be communicating with each other using this pairing connection so if i take something like uh, tomorrow i am going to have another vpc c like uh, say in this case uh, vpc c is here I am pairing the VPC B to VPC C, right? So what happens? B and C can communicate with each other, but problem is A cannot communicate to C. That's what the transitive pairing is all about. Transitive pairing is not allowed. So in order for A to communicate to C, we need to pair A and C so that this communication will happen. And one more thing, as I mentioned, you need to remember the CIDR addresses. Here you can see 10.0.0.4 and 172.31.0. So it needs to be different. Same CIDR addresses cannot be peered with each other. So the VPC CIDRs must be different if you are going to peer the VPCs. The another important thing to remember is AWS Direct Connect. AWS Direct Connect is quite simple. It is a dedicated LAN. Say if if you are going to connect your on-premises network to the AWS network, what are all the various different options to do so? The there are two main important options. One option is AWS Direct Connect. Direct Connect is the dedicated leased LAN, which means they will be providing a separate LAN, separate LAN between the on-premises to the AWS network, so that the communication between the on-premises to AWS will happen using the dedicated network line. It is like this process is slightly complicated. It takes some time. We need to get the approvals and all these things. But we will get a dedicated bandwidth of 50 Mbps to 100 Mbps speed. So is there any other option available to communicate between on-premises and the AWS network? We can do it using our older friend which is the VPN. We can establish the side-to-side -side VPN connections between our on-premises network network to the AWS network so the data communication between on-premises and AWS will be very secure this is a simple diagram by which you can do see within the VPC we will be having subnet and all these things so we will be having a component called uh, virtual private gateway and this is the on-premises network where the customer gateway is there we can establish 
the VPN connection between the virtual private gateway and the customer gateway. By, by doing so, this will be very secure. The data communication between the on-premises and the AWS is very secure. We can do the similar type of an option using the transit gateway. Transit is one new introduction by AWS, which, which is the important networking construct to remember. I am covering it as the part of the next thing. So, what is the AWS Transit Gateway? Transit Gateway will avoid the excessive peering connections between various different VPCs. Not only between VPCs, between the other connections as well. So you, you see this diagram. Say in this case, say I am, I am having a customer gateway. I am having a VPC, another VPC, another VPC. So I am having four VPCs. So in order for communication to happen, I need to peer each and every VPC. As we discussed, transitive peering is not allowed. So we need to peer each every VPC we need to pair it with customer gateway all these type of meshy connections full mesh connections we need to establish but to avoid that AWS came up with the transit gateway so we can simply connect all the components to AWS transit gateway so it will take care of all the traffic diversions so this is one good addition it, it saves lot of time it saves lot of time in terms of transitive pairing and VPC pairing so using transit gateway we can save lot of time and we can save the pairing complex bearing networks as well. One important thing to know is Route 53. Route 53 is the domain name service. It is a DNS service which is similarly compared to GoDaddy and other things. So you can register your domain using AWS Route 53. And um, we can have a lot of other options like health checks and monitoring as well. So we can design the routing principles. It is like based on different routing principles. We can define it like simple or failover or geolocation or geo proximity, latency, multi-value and weighted based routing. So based on the routing type the traffic will be routed so let us take simple example of weighted routing policy say i can define 50 50 weightage or 40 40 40 60 or 30 70 something like that so similarly the traffic will be diverted or routed to the various different set of instances behind the route 53 so route 53 in simple it is the dns service to remember along with that it provides the other options of health checks and monitoring one one good thing it is an aws global accelerator is the newer introduction to this networking family which provides an global performance using the AWS backbone network. If you can see say this example will explain it in more. Say I am having a mobile device and I am going to access the EC2 which is available in the AWS region. So if you are going to do it using the regular internet, it will take a lot of time. So instead what we can do, we can make use of the global accelerator which uses the AWS global network. It will save a lot of packet loss, jitter and latency. In general, Global Accelerator uses the AWS backbone to provide a high performance and latency. AWS CloudFront. AWS CloudFront is another service which uses the CDN. We, we discussed about the edge locations in one of the previous videos. So CloudFront is the service which uses the edge locations to deliver the data and videos and other APIs globally with very, very low latency and high transfer speeds. So you can very well deploy your web application or other applications using AWS Amazon CloudFront, which will very well integrate with AWS Shield, WAF and other Route 53 production mechanisms. It works very well with S3, EC2 and ELBs as well. So we came to the end of this lecture. I hope this lecture is informative for you. I am looking forward to see you in the next lecture.